Tak jest mi bardzo miło zapowiedzieć wykład. Visiting profesor, profesor Oleny Olinik pod tytułem Totalianism in, architect in Architecture and City Planning. Pani profesor jest wiceprzewodniczącą Narodowego Związku Architektów Ukrainy, a także profesorem Narodowej Akademii, profesorem Wydziału Architektury Narodowej Akademii Sztuki i Architektury w Kijowie na Ukrainie. Posiada też bogate doświadczenie w praktyce projektowej, architektonicznej i urbanistycznej oraz w badaniach nad dziedzictwem architektonicznym i urbanistycznym. Także jest mi bardzo miło oddać głos Pani Profesor. Z przyjemnością wysłuchamy. Dziękuję Panie Profesor. Uh, good afternoon uh, everybody. Uh, the topic of my lecture uh, totalitarianism in architecture and uh, city planning. Uh, this uh, uh, period, uh, period of totalitarianism is perhaps uh, the most uh, dramatic uh, not only in the history of uh, uh, Ukraine but also in all countries uh, of Eastern Europe. The tragedy experienced by the Soviet people, the physical destruction of the intellectual elite of the population, the atmosphere of constant fear and ideological pressure have affected the fact that everything related to totalitarianism later received a negative assessment. This primarily concerned architecture. So studies of totalitarian architecture are, are still rare, even in European countries. Uh, the, main, uh, the most complete uh, study of totalitarianism remains the work of Hannah Arendt, uh, The Origins of Totalitarianism, where she claims uh, that the development of totalitarianism requires a large Uh, uh, population, a huge number of inert mass of the people who gradually lose they, their individuality and become uh, cogs uh, of the system. Countries with a large population are always at risk of totalitarianism. Totalitarian rulers, both Hitler and uh, Stalin, attached great importance uh, to art and architecture. In 1933, in uh, an address on race and culture, Hitler proclaimed that even if a people dies out and if men fall silent, the stones will speak. He called art and visible uh, he called art the visible demonstration of a people's higher values which uh, still remain after millennia, uh, the indestructible uh, witnesses, not merely the, great, uh, the greatness of a people, but at the same time also of the people's moral right to uh, life. The architectural and artistic uh, basis of totalitarian architecture was uh, the concept of the city of beauty which considered the city as an organic whole based on the landscape approach to planning. This concept was uh, uh, based uh, on the aesthetization uh, of regular Gipper scale. It was embodied in the reconstruction of Chicago designed uh, by Daniel Bernheim in 1909. Lewis Mumford and Jane Jacobs criticized Bernheim's plan for its <coughs> monumentalism. However, Goldberger claimed it, was, uh, claimed it was the most effective example of large-scale urban uh, planning America has ever seen and called the long majestic uh, waterfront Uh, of Chicago refreshing and the project itself a continuation uh, of the Garden City tradition. 
the reconstruction uh, plans of other American cities, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, were based, uh, based on this conception too. But it was most vividly embodied in Chicago. The deeper scale of uh, the city of beauty was not designed for an individual, but for the mass. Uh, it is quite natural that the totalitarian regimes of the uh, 20th century gravitated towards the same model with a special passion. Uh, both Germany and uh, the USSR uh, used neoclassical uh, styles for the purposes uh, of totalitarianism. Uh, in, uh, 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 this uh, using of these uh, styles, uh, styles of the past, of the past, meant presence in the past, confirmation of the greatness uh, and eternity uh, of this uh, nation. Colossal mega <coughs> spaces are currently being built in Germany. Speer, the chief architect of Hitler, said we should be able to build structures which even in a state of decay after hundreds or thousands of years would more or less resemble Roman models. The Führer planned to rebuild all big cities in Germany, each of which, each of which uh, should have a central esplanade intended for mass demonstrations. A particularly long and wide avenue was designed in Munich. It was supposed to be uh, six kilometers long. In accordance with this scale, the colossal house of uh, uh, German art was realized in front of which the Nazis uh, gathered for rallies. Hitler uh, was going to rebuild uh, Berlin as well, turning it into a world capital. His words are known. Post-war Berlin can be compared only with Babylon and ancient Rome, uh, and not with uh, some vulgar Paris and uh, London. The airport uh, that was built in Berlin is still the largest uh, uh, in, in the world. Norman Foster called it uh, the mother of all, of all airports. So the architecture of totalitarianism in both Moscow and Berlin uh, was uh, pathetic, uh, hyperscale, uh, and demonstrated the majesty of power. Space were created for mass demonstration, rallies, competitions, parades, and uh, they were anti-democratic, uh, suppressing uh, people. Uh, avenue and square become the main type uh, of uh, space. <clears throat> Mass meetings and marches in front of the dictator were a mandatory attribute of totalitarian mm, uh, power. There was an open competition between Germany and the USSR, the demonstration of which was a physical confrontation of two pavilions at the Paris World Exhibition in 1967. In Ukraine, the period of totalitarianism became a period of famine, terror, destruction of Ukrainian identity and nation at all. In, 1960, uh, in 1932, the party announced uh, a transition to the method of socialist realism and a total orientation to the classic. Uh, the active politicization of architectural activity and the formation of totalitarian architecture begins. The reconstruction of the cities of Ukraine was influenced uh, by uh, 
the uh, theoretical developments of uh, Milutin, who proposed a linear flow functional scheme uh, where the urban area was zoned into parallel strips. According to this scheme, from 1929 to 1932, the so-called socialist city Big Zaporizhia was built. Famous Russian constructivist architects worked on uh, the project. Uh, representatives of Germany, France, uh, the USA and other countries took part in, the design, in this design. In total, four uh, teams worked on city planning under the leadership of uh, Shusev, Visnin and uh, others. The town consisted of six uh, town planning entities, uh, which are still called villages. Uh, each quarter in which from uh, 500 to 3000 people were supposed to live, had an original structure and composition. The most famous, uh, sorry, the most famous uh, complex of building in Ukraine of this period is uh, Dershprom or House of State Industry in Kharkiv. Uh, rising to 12 uh, stories and occupying the biggest part of Kharkiv's uh, circular Dzerzhinsky Square, now Freedom uh, Square, it became a symbol of constructivist and Stalin architecture in Ukraine. This uh, the constructivism, uh, constructivist game with contrasts of volumes, materials, and pure forms is implemented here in hyperscale totalitarian volumes. In other cities, new gigantic social and administrative buildings were also uh, built. Uh, due to the fact uh, that Kyiv resisted the Bolsheviks uh, until, uh, until 1921, uh, uh, Kharkiv itself became the first Bolshevik capital of Ukraine. The capital was moved uh, to Kyiv only in 1924 and planting of new Soviet identity began almost immediately. The government's strategy was the formation of a new capital center uh, at the expense of the destruction of existing historical monuments. In the master plan of 1936, the imperial policy of introduction a new identity and forced direction of development from west to uh, east perpendicular to Dnieper was laid contrary to the thousand-year tradition of the city's development along the Dnieper. The new government center uh, was designed just on the territory of ancient Kyiv. As a result of the all uh, union a competition held in uh, 1932-34, uh, 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 the concept of uh, the government center was determined. The main axis which connected uh, the St. Sophia and St. Michael cathedrals was expanded uh, and, sorry, was expanded and uh, uh, turned into a square for military parades, ending with a giant statue of uh, Joseph Stalin. In different projects, uh, the architecture of the building framing the ceremonial government zone uh, differed, but in general, uh, the ideas were similar. Uh, triumphal arches, monuments, uh, towers, and parades were mandatory attributes. The project of Josef Langbart was recognized as a winner. Only a part of the huge complex was, uh, was built uh, from it. The current building of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with a colonnade reminiscent uh, of uh, the monumental complexes of ancient Egypt. Uh, for the construction 
of this complex, the 12th uh, century Michael's Golden Dome uh, uh, Monastery was demolished. It was rebuilt only in 1998. Uh, Saint Sophia uh, Cathedral <coughs> miraculously survived. In uh, 1936, 1939, uh, uh, the following uh, well, built, well built. The building of uh, the NKVD, now the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine project of uh, Ivan Komin, then administration of uh, President, uh, former um, uh, headquarters of the Kyiv Special Military District, architect Grigoriev. Uh, building of uh, the Verkhovna Rada of the Ukrainian SSR uh, project of Vladimir Zabolotny, which stands uh, out among others for the respect uh, for its respect for landscape, contextuality, and proportionality. Best Ukrainian architects such as uh, Zabolotny. Uh, unlike uh, the Moscow projects, even in those conditions preserved the originality of Ukrainian architect. The interiors of uh, uh, the Verkhovna Rada are human-sized and resemble the best example of European Art Deco. As a result of uh, uh, all Ukrainian... Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, on Khrushchev, uh, which at that time was a uh, densely built up street corridor, only a few new buildings are appearing, among them the central department uh, store. On Pechersk, another historic hill, a number of prestigious uh, houses were built for KGB employees and the military. Uh, they were decorated in Art Deco style. After the Second World War, a new stage of totalitarianism begins. All destroyed uh, cities uh, are reconstructed according to new plans. Uh, city plans are based on the unchanging concept of gigantomania and regular planning. Stalingrad was designed according to this uh, scheme. Tver, for example. Novorossiysk, and even uh, Minsk, in which, in which the remains of the medieval center were completely destroyed and a new center based on the Soviet prototype was built. Neoclassicism uh, was the dominant style for Soviet post-war architecture. As a result uh, of the reconstruction, Minsk almost completely lost the features of its medieval identity and turned into a typical Soviet ensemble. Warsaw suffered greatly during forced reconstruction under the supervision of the pro-Soviet uh, uh, government. Marshalkovska Street still embodies in its space a harsh and undemocratic totalitarian meaning. <clears throat> the main task in Dresden and Warsaw was not to rebuild the historical centers, but to transform the city according to Soviet principles. Historical buildings were rebuilt only thanks to local activists. Historical urban spaces were destroyed uh, by the Soviet governments because they were the bearers of history and identity next to architectural monument. Even uh, Berlin with uh, its Karl Marx Allee also received a pro-Soviet uh, identity. Sofia and Bucharest uh, were also uh, not left out of the attention of the Soviet authorities. 
In this uh, series, uh, the story of the post-war reconstruction of Khrushchev is not typical. <coughs> By the middle of the uh, 20th century, Khrushchev acquired a, a look typical of most European uh, capitals, a solid perimeter buildings uh, with shops on the ground floors. Uh, in September 1941, the Red Army retreating mined and blew up Khrushchev and the entire center of uh, uh, the capital. 50,000 Kievans uh, were then left without a roof over their heads or property. The number of victims among civilians uh, is still unknown. The explosive device was planted under all infrastructure facilities, uh, bridges across the Dnieper, administrative buildings, as well as Assumption Cathedral, uh, the Opera House, museums, and uh, some large residential buildings. The consequences of explosions and fires were terrible. The historical center of Kyiv, which made up the glory of the city, no longer uh, existed. About a thousand large residential and administrative buildings were completely destroyed. <clears throat> uh, the competition for the reconstruction of Khrushchev was announced uh, back when the war was still on, in June 1944. The level uh, of the competition as well as tasks set uh, before the participants and their urban planning solutions were without parallel both in Ukraine and uh, in all of Europe in the first uh, post-war decade. However, the um, final master plan of Khrushchev was not approved until 1949. His concept offered sharply from the neoclassical regular giant avenues in other cities. The reconstruction of Khrushchev in 40s and 90s and 50s uh, was carried, uh, carried out by a team of Kyiv-based architects and patriots, uh, Dobrovolsky, Yelizarov, Primak, Zavarov, Malinovsky and others. In contrast, in contrast to other cities, the authors subordinated the entire concept on the existing landscape, preserved the surviving, surviving buildings, and differently solved the architecture of uh, the even and odd sides of the street. The centerpiece of their concept was to build uh, up the even side of the streets with a continuous front of administrative, commercial and civil uh, structures and its odd side with mostly residential buildings with stores, cafes and cinemas on the ground floor. The even number, numbered site is more restrained with perimeter construction while the odd numbered site is separate residential ensembles richly decorated and unique by its special organization. Most importantly, uh, they managed to give the city a new dimension. Uh, also to emphasize the natural landscape of the central part of Kyiv with a gentle care uh, of buildings to remind the traditions of Ukrainian Baroque and folk architecture in the upper decoration and decoration of building facades. Another distinctive aspect of the Khrushchev project is that it was designed for a territory uh, to be rebuilt from the war damage rather than a vacant space. <coughs> Leaning uh, on the landscape forms and were definitive for the historic center of Kyiv, it incorporated surviving buildings which were painstakingly restored. The architectural and artistic uh, treatment was different 
for both sides uh, of the streets. The imagery of Khrushchev's architecture is based on uh, interpretation of Baroque forms and methods. Khrushchev is the only architectural ensemble of the period uh, of totalitarianism to combine national tradition with the exalted sentiment of Soviet architecture and Stalin era. The facades have elements of Ukrainian Baroque, which sets Khrushchev apart from similar ensembles of the uh, 40s, 50s in other countries that mainly drew upon neoclassicism or modernism. While uh, period uh, architecture in other countries is typically marked uh, by its grand scale and greatness of authority, Khrushchev stand out for its pronounced harmony as a uh, public uh, open space, uh, democratic space, based, based on the careful preservation of old heritage and feature uh, of the landscape and the introduction of tradition uh, motifs, among them flowers, fruits, rosettes, and rocai, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, almost a total lack of Soviet symbols. The facades of residential buildings that uh, the uh, uh, Khrushchev emanate joy of life and uh, admiration for the fertility of Ukrainian soil. The architectural decor continue, uh, continues the local vernacular tradition and Ukrainian Baroque style. Colorful mosaic compositions decorating the, uh, the walls of archways and the interiors of uh, the Khrushchev subway station draw upon uh, the tradition of Mikhailo Boychuk's school of monumental art, an original, if short-lived, phenomenon which was almost completely eliminated in the Stalinist purges of the 1930s. All these features of Khrushchev's <coughs> appearance attest <coughs> to a rise of national spirit and intent to revive an artistic tradition uh, in which monumental art and facade decoration held a central place. The original uh, conception is based on creating of kind of pulsating space, which we now perceive as a logical scenario for a street. Furthermore, uh, landscape was not only uh, factored in, but rather given priority. Situated in a valley between two picturesque hills, Khrushchev <coughs> has numerous spe special ties to surrounding <coughs> built-up areas. <coughs> This can be seen from the completion of the streets connecting it to the upper town, the dominant high rises on the odd side, the asymmetrical composition of the odd and even sides, <coughs> smooth turn of the street and the gaps and arches uh, that create additional virtual uh, connection. Uh, specialized ceramic workshops were set up for the manufacture of uh, tiles, ornament and sculptural composition at the experimental factory, factory of the Ukrainian Academy of Architecture. Uh, summing up, it can be uh, said that the synthesis of arts used in, uh, in the reconstruction of Khrushchev both performed political uh, tasks and revived national tradition in the decor, color scheme, and plastic artwork of the building. Uh, the interest, uh, this uh, interest in artistic form and intent to rethink national artistic tradition in uh, the country's main street was a manifestation of ideological resistance and national awakening. 
the ideas uh, built into the reconstruction of Khrushchev are topical even today. The scale and character of the street's architecture reflect uh, the skill in the process of reconstruction, which was realized without, uh, without the treatment to the intimate human and almost lyrical character this ancient city has always possessed. The experience uh, of the reconstruction of Khrushchev proves the power of national resistance, which can be manifested even in the most difficult times. What the fact in what in fact Ukraine is demonstrating right now. So thank you for your attention. Slava Ukraini. Dziękuję bardzo. Proszę, może są pytanie czy coś. No to dziękuję bardzo i to, to będzie nagrane. Tak, proszę. Jaki to jest stanie w tej chwili? Proszę? Jaki to jest stanie w tej chwili? W, w dość niezłym, bo nie było bombardowań w Kryściatyku. No trochę gorszy niż na tych zdjęciach, ale w, w normalnym stanie, dość normalnym, tak. To, to wszystko zdjęcia ostatnie, co ja pokazywała. No może w zeszłym roku. Dziękuję. Bardzo dziękuję. Dziękuję.